Hello everyone and welcome back to Badminton Weekly with me, Jasmine Lim. Now, the Total Energy Speed WF Thomas and Uber Cup Finals is just around the corner and we're dedicating the next two episodes to build up to this prestigious biannual tournament. But before we dive any further and hear from our experts, let's first recap the draw that was held on the 22nd of March in the host city of Chengdu. Host and 10-time winners China are in Group A along with two-time runner-ups Korea, Canada and Australia, while Japan, who won once back in 2014, are in Group B with Chinese Taipei, Germany and debutantes Czech Republic. Group C, dubbed the Group of Death by fans, features defending champions India, runner-ups Indonesia, Thailand and England. Lastly, Group D compromises five-time winners Malaysia, European heavyweights Denmark, Hong Kong, China and Algeria. In the Uber Cup, 15-time winners China are in Group A alongside India, Canada and Singapore. While Thailand are drawn in Group B with Chinese Taipei, Malaysia and Oceania champions Australia. Six-time winners Japan and three-time champs Indonesia are in Group C with Hong Kong and debutantes Uganda. And finally, defending champions Korea begin their title defense in Group D alongside Denmark, USA and Mexico. With that, let's join Jeff Tho and Kirsty Gilmer as they take a closer look at host China and their hopes of capitalizing on home advantage. If you want to have a look at the strongest team on paper for China, they look like a strong contender to win the Thomas Cup this year. Well, men's singles is such a huge element of the Thomas Cup and because there's three matches of men's singles in each tie, China has two of the top 10 in men's singles world rank players, that's Xi Yuqi and Li Shifeng. And then they've got two more in the top 20, which is Lu Guangzhu and Wang Hongyang. So I think from a men's singles point of view, they're really very, very, very strong because they've got four in the top 20. But even if they send like a younger team, they still have a very, very good chance of winning. Just like they did in the Asian team championships where they still came out the champions, even though countries like Malaysia, India and Japan sent out all of their top players. From a depth point of view, I feel like China has the best depth in the, the men's singles event. And as we know, in men's doubles, there are only two matches in each tie compared to singles, which has three matches. So if we just look at the top 10 world ranked players, China has two pairs in the top 10. That's Yang and Wang and Yu and O. Oh. And then we've got He and Ren, which is number 11, so almost top 10. So I know that world ranking alone doesn't determine whether someone is selected over another person and who will win on the day of competition. But I think that we can all agree that China will be a very big contender for the Thomas Cup title, even though there's a lot of competition out there still. So because they have this depth, maybe they the extra bit of home support can help them get over the line and they can repeat what they did back in 2012 and bring the Thomas Cup back to China. I think uh, that's the, the beauty of uh, team championships is the surprises that we can have. It's just the dynamic of the, the situation and the circumstances just a little bit different. We saw kind of an upset um, in the last uh, iteration of the Uber Cup with Korea uh, beating China in fairly dramatic fashion. We went back and forward until it was two each and we went to that fifth game. I don't think anyone really had their money on Korea, especially you know if we look at China's strength in their women's singles. Uh, they have five players in the top 15 and four of them are in the top 10. And then if we look at their doubles pairs, we have four pairs in the top 16. Um, so yes, I think it is China's competition to lose. And then if we also add in their extra squad member of a home crowd and let me tell you I've been in an arena with that crowd against me it really does feel like you know they've got extra members on their team so it, it's I think it's really in China's hands um, and it's China's competition to lose. 
Now, as mentioned earlier, alongside China's Uber Cup team in Group A are Canada, Singapore and India. The latter two teams have fielded a rather young team, but despite that, India's Ashwini Punapa and Singapore's Yo Tia Min express confidence in their squad's potential to spring a surprise or two in Chengdu. Well, yes, this time around, India is going to be sending a very young team to the Uber Cup with Quite a few of them having their first experience being a part of the Indian team on a big scale like the Uber Cup. And we've got players as young as 16 and 17 who are on the team. Of course, the ideal situation and scenario would have been if the entire team could have been there. But since that isn't to be this time around, I would say it's going to be interesting to see if the young team can take the pressure of going there and performing and of course it's going to be very difficult, Herculean task to keep up what happened at the BATC but I'm sure a lot of them would be going out there to make sure they give their best and win a point for the team so it's going to be pretty interesting to see how it goes because we have players like Anmol and Ashmita along with Tandi Sharma who were a part of the BATC and who played a very crucial and critical role in winning matches at ties which needed those points but Having said that, you also have the advantage of being young, wild and free, I guess. So they would have that edge over them where they're really excited and very curious and energetic to get onto court and also confident and fearless in some sense because when you're young, you tend to be a lot more fearless. So yeah, I would say they would have that to their advantage. And India is on the rise currently, so it's really good to make sure that we showcase the next generation of talents and uh, it'll be great to see them perform and do well even though it's going to be very difficult but having said that, you never know what's going to happen and I do wish the girls all the very best. I think this year is an opportunity given to our Team Singapore. I think it will be another good memory that I can look back to next time. And yeah, the same thing, I will do my best to make it a memorable one for us. Recently, you know, the team in Singapore has been a younger one um, and that has not completed a lot. So I kind of feel that it's also my responsibility to show them how to put ourselves out there and how to prepare for competitions and things like that. So I think these little things um, may add up as pressure but um, I'll just take it in my stride. In terms of playing against those world top you know, 30 players or so, they will not feel as um, comfortable but I think every opportunity like this will make them get used to it and maybe hopefully at, at the same time gain confidence with every opportunity. So yeah, I think with time, they will get better. Even if we may not be at the same in terms of physicality or technicality, uh, I think first thing is we have to bring the right mind to that um, You know, be fearless and not to be affected by opponent or, you know, it can be affected by many things. So firstly, I think it's to prepare the minds of all the players before going in. Group B of the Uber Cup sees Thailand and Chinese Taipei group together, sparking excitement among fans for a potential Rachanong Intanon and Taizung showdown. These two have met each other 35 times before, and their encounters have always been nothing short of exciting. Now, let's turn to Kirsty Gilman as she breaks down what could be a potential 36 electrifying meeting between the two. We could, as fans, be in for a rematch of uh, 2012 Uber Cup and 2018 Uber Cup with Ratchanok versus Tai Tzu Ying. If they do get to play, we're in for an incredible match. Uh, I think 18 of the 35 matches have gone to three sets. Um, tai Tzu Ying has a 20 to 15 head-to-head -head win advantage and she's won the past Uber Cup matches of this pairing. So yeah, it's one that fans are, are really looking forward to and we really hope we get the chance to see it. It's for sure both players are gonna come with shot quality. They're gonna come with variation of shots. 
and then their speed and their coverage of the court is two of the best to ever do it. They're really, they're quite similar players in, in that sense and they just bring a calmness to the court. Nothing ever seems too rushed or desperate. Saying that, I think Ratchanok has a bit more danger overhead. She has a bit more overhead power. That is brilliant. Service over. Four, three. So strong in Tanon. But I think Tai Tzu Ying has slight advantage at the net with her deception and with her skill. That's not to say Ratchanok doesn't have that. Oh. <laughs> Not just the net, she can play some magical shots. Look at that, no look from the back line. That's unbelievable. So for me, with the attributes that both players bring to the game, it's going to come down to, on the day, who can adapt and acclimatize to the conditions in the arena, who's got that feeling for especially those mid-court uh, and net shots to set up their attack. And because it's a team tournament, I think it's who utilizes that kind of extra man on the on the field. For me, I would slightly lean towards Tai Tzu Ying taking this head to head. Um, having said that, Ratchnock seems fairly confident that she can get the win and help Thailand to get to she feels, you know, at least a semi final she feels they're capable of at least a semi final, which would put them in the medal contention. So um, yeah, she must be feeling really good about her form. Um, and we all know Ratchnock's an absolute world class player, so we'll see what Team Thailand can put together on the day. Yeah, for sure. I'm happy to be a part of that time and for this time I also still be the women singer for Thailand team, so uh, I just do my best. I, I don't know another player, but I believe that Thai can go to the semi-final at least. Turning our attention to Group B of the Thomas Cup, where we have Japan, Chinese Taipei, Germany and Czech Republic, Peter Gaeta sees a clear top two within these countries. Let's hear from the former world number one as he reveals his picks and reasoning. Well, for, for me, uh, the, the clear favourites of Group B uh, will definitely be uh, Chinese Taipei and, and Japan. Um, I don't see Germany or Czech Republic uh, being able to uh, to harm uh, the two other teams, and um, they need they need more than a good day to be able to uh, to get close to a win. So for me, it's uh, it's quite obvious that uh, Japan and Chinese Taipei will will go through from uh, from this group. Well, Chen Chen Chu is is for sure for me. Uh, uh, very important for, for the Taipei, Taipei team. Um, with his, his experience and his personality, I think uh, he, he will be and he should be the one leading uh, the rest of the pack. Um, and it's always very, very important when the, you know, the first player on court uh, to, to lead your team is, uh, is, a, is very important. It sends a signal to everyone. And I think in that matter, he will be uh, crucial to. Uh, to kind of the also the way they kick off and the way the, that the Taipei type, type team they show the rest of the teams that they, they really mean this they you know they're going for a top result in this uh, Thomas Cup. I think that what, what the Japanese team uh, did by including uh, Ken Tomomota is, uh, is a very clever thing. I think I would have done the same if I were the coach. If he's just somewhere near his, his normal level, old level, then I think he's, he could be a tricky and, and really important player to put in a third men's, men's singles. I think that's a really good card for the Japanese team to, to, to have on their hands and, and to, to use Kento if, if needed. But I also think it, it, it will probably depend on how he's, he's doing and his, uh, his form and feeling uh, at the moment. But we have seen some positive things for him and I really hope that it, it would be amazing to have him go in a third men's singles against uh, China, Denmark, uh, Malaysia or Indonesia. Thanks so much Peter and everyone else who joined us today. And with that, we've come to the end of this week's episode. Join us next week as we continue to build up to the Total Energy Speed of Yaf Thomas and Uber Cup Finals and take a deeper look at the defending champions and the remaining groups. Before we go, don't forget you can always get the latest news updates and action from the BWF app Badminton for you. What do you think of China's chances at home? Let us know on our Facebook and YouTube pages along with your thoughts, comments and questions. See you guys next week!